the way our players have sort of started preparation for the first game. Uh, I know at this time of the year, fall camp is always a grind. So there's always, you know, a lot of anticipation, uh, a lot of energy and enthusiasm to, you know, play the first game. And I think the focus for us needs to be on playing the best, setting a standard for, you know, how we want to play, how we want to do things, how we want to finish plays, how we want to execute, you know, what is the identity of this team, you know, going to be. I think there's lessons learned from a year ago when we didn't prepare right, we didn't practice the way, you know, I think we need to practice to prepare. You know, we didn't always play really well. So to be a more consistent team in terms of our ability to prepare and execute, I think is going to be critical for, you know, how we play not only in the opener, but how we progress throughout the season. Uh, Utah State, Blake Anderson has done a really good job there. This team can play, you know, really in any conference and do well. Um, they ended up a top 25 team a year ago. They won 11 games, beat, you know, a couple Pac-12 teams, um, beat Oregon State in the bowl game. And they've got like 12 starters back, um, quarterbacks back, who's a really good player. Uh, they were one of the most effective passing teams in the country a year ago. These guys are very aggressive on defense. They create a lot of negative plays. Uh, they get a lot of turnovers. Um, they've got their specialists back. So uh, they had a, a game. Obviously, you know that they beat uh, Connecticut last week, you know, 31 to 20. And got off to a little bit of a slow start, but then played really well, you know, as the game progressed. So, um, you know, this is really kind of about us and how we prepare to play and what we need to do against uh, a really good opponent. So um, that's going to be the emphasis, emphasis, you know, all week long for us. You mentioned some concerns about depth in the last week or so. At what position would you say you're most comfortable depth-wise? I mean, look, we're just trying to get as many guys to play winning football as, you know, we possibly can. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of competition on our team right now, which I think, you know, really helps you develop the kind of depth that you need on the team because guys are out there every day, you know, working hard. I think, you know, one of the things we try to emphasize to our players is whether you're going to start or be a backup, you've got to prepare yourself to be ready to go when you get your opportunity. You know, a lot of guys kind of slack off a little bit when they don't think they're going to play or they're not going to start or whatever their role might be. And then when they do get to play and they do get to be called on, you know, they're not ready to go. So we're, we're, we're trying to emphasize that so that we get more players on the team who can play winning football for us. And, you know, we're going to continue to do that, you know, at every position. What does it say about your experience depth at running back and how well you've recruited that position that you have a, a back the caliber of, of Jace McClellan behind Jameer? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we feel good about the running back position. There's experience there, even though two of the guys, two out of the first three guys or two out of the first four guys, however you want to couch it, um, are coming off of injuries. They don't seem to be having any issues or problems and have had really good fall camps. Uh, Jameer has, you know, been a, a really positive addition to the offense in terms of what he gives us. So I think we have five guys there that can play winning football, and we're going to continue to try to develop all those guys. Obviously, based on what happened last year, this is a, a position where it's good to have a lot of depth. And cornerbacks, you see there are uh, oars between two of the starters where uh, Terry and Arnold and what has he done this preseason to to impress you? Well, he's played with a lot of consistency. He's got a lot more confidence now. I think he's a lot more comfortable with what he's supposed to do, how he's supposed to do it, why he's supposed to do it that way. And uh, he's played, you know, really well uh, all fall camp. And I'm really pleased with the progress that he's made. And Consistency and performance at any position is really important, but especially at the cornerback position where you really got to focus because there's going to be five or six plays in a game that you have to make. But those five or six plays are going to be critical plays in the game, probably end up either being big plays or, 
you know, in completion. So that consistency and performance is really, really important at that position because you got to be able to stay focused and stay on your game every play, even though you may only get challenged, you know, five, six plays in the game. So, uh, and, you know, we'll see who can do that the best. Kind of a two-parter on the tight ends. Just do you have an update on Cam Latou and his progress? And then with him being out this preseason, have you seen some of those younger guys at tight end progress? Yeah, Cam's going to start practicing today. See how he progresses and see how he does. I don't think anybody can, you know, make a prediction about that right now. He was on the, you know, treadmill and all that stuff last week. Never had an issue, never had a problem. So, you know, the next thing he does is start, you know, dry land, working, doing individual, seeing what he can do in practice. And, you know, it's kind of day to day with him. But I think the good news is, is, because we have three young players at that position, they have gotten a ton of reps and made significant progress because of the ton of reps that they've got in his absence. Um, so, you know, Robbie Oates has done a really good job uh, at the position, but all three young guys have made significant progress and they'll probably, you know, have some role in this game. Yeah. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr. Uh, had to go to the hospital yesterday after you know suffering some non-life-threatening injuries. Have you had a chance to reach out to him, or um, kind of what are your thoughts there? Yeah, well, we our uh, thoughts and prayers are out with to be Rob and his family, and I did reach out to him. I uh, didn't get him, um, so we texted him. So, you know, B. Rob is doing really, really well. I think he's doing well uh, relative to the information that we have. Uh, even to the point where they think he may be able to come back and play at some point in the season. So we're hopeful for that. We'll keep our fingers crossed, but uh, we're just glad that this is not something that is, you know, critical to his future uh, or putting his life in jeopardy in the, in the short term. Steven? You've talked about Ja'Cory Brooks' competitiveness before, but what makes him kind of have that feel for – being on special teams returning kickoffs? Well, he's going to probably be the off returner, but Jacory is very competitive. I uh, like his spirit, like his energy, like the way he works every day. And uh, he's had a really good fall camp and whatever role we've asked him to be in, whether it's special teams, being a starter receiver, you know, he's always responded in a really positive way and done a good job. And, He's continued to do that throughout fall camp, and I'd assume we'll continue to do it, you know, all season long. So how much do you weigh the production that, that Trey Sean and uh, Kobe Prentice had in the scrimmages when making a decision on who's going to play in the game? Well, I think that's why we practice. I think that's why we have scrimmages, see who's going to be productive, who's going to be competitive, who can go out there and sustain, know what to do, play fast, make plays have confidence in, in what they're doing. So uh, I think it has a significant impact on, you know, what their roles are going to be in a game. Hey coach, happy week one to you. I uh, just wanted to ask on, you touched on the competition that you see, and obviously there's competition with certain position battles that you, you know, are expecting in the preseason, but I want to know just how do you encourage that in these other position groups where you don't see that do you want to see the competition just kind of remain? And how do you actually encourage that within players throughout the season? Well, no one's entitled to anything, you know, on our team. So, you know, the message to every player every day, regardless of what the competitive circumstance is at his position is you're trying to create value for yourself. You're trying to be the best player that you can be. There shouldn't be any external factors that determine how you go about that. And if you're, really a true competitor you don't need somebody to be competing for your job because you're competing with yourself to be the best version of yourself that you can be relative to whatever you choose to do in your life so it just happens to be football that you're playing right now so hopefully you're going out there every day and competing to play well and in most cases if i see guys that i don't think are doing that we put somebody else in. Um, that's the one way to get the message across that 
you're not entitled to play unless you do things the way you're capable of doing them. Go to the CW on the left. Yeah, Coach, you said Utah State, they played in one last week. What do you think the positives and negatives are to playing in week zero and getting that game experience versus getting the extra rest like you guys did? Well, I think it's always a good thing to play a game. You always find out where you are. Uh, they probably found out a lot of things about their team. They usually improve a lot from week one to week two. Um, so from that standpoint, it's probably an advantage to have had a game. But at the same time, um, you know, sometimes when you have a game, things go well. Some things don't go well. Sometimes you get guys injured. I don't know what the status of their team is after that particular game in terms of how it might impact them and how they'll play in the next game. So I don't think anybody can really answer that question uh, because it's probably up to each individual and each team in terms of how they approach what they do. But I fully expect this team to come here and having played a game or not played a game um, and look at this as a tremendous opportunity to sort of, you know, say who they are as a team in terms of how they play. So I don't think their motivation is going to be anything but stellar in terms of how they come in and look at and approach, you know, playing, you know, us here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. One more Tony. You spoke a few times about Jaheim Otis's progression throughout the preseason. Just what did he do ultimately to to prove himself, to put himself in that split starting role? And then how does he also co complement his game compared to DJ Dale? Well, look, you know, the first thing about being a good defensive lineman at whatever position you play is you need to be hard to block. So if I was going to say something simple without getting tech, too technical, I would say he was hard to block. And if he can continue to not make mental errors and understand exactly what his role is up front, I think, you know, he can make a significant contribution in playing. Um, how you compare one player to another, I don't really think, you know, they both play the same position. Uh, we have the same expectation for what they need to do at that position. And, you know, both guys are capable of doing it well. So I don't think comparing players is really a fair thing for me to try to do. All right, thank you.